And we are counting down to the international window. For Nigeria, we've got a situation of less being given for more. Coach Joseph Pusero has agreed to continue serving as the head coach of the senior men's national team of Nigeria, known as the Super Eagles. Per an agreement he signed with the Nigerian Football Federation. Now, the Portuguese have been given the responsibility to guide the Super Eagles to, at the very least, the semi final of the 34th African Cup of Nations finals, which will take place in Cote d'Ivoire in a few moons, as specified in the original contract drawn on May 2022. Now, if Pesciero does not get the semi final of the 2024 African Cup of Nations, he will be dismissed as the Super Regals coach. Now, to join us in this conversation, because we need clarity at this time, is football commentator from Nigeria, Kinsley Akban. Thank you so much, Kinsley, for joining us on the show. Well, Oyinchi, thank you very much for having me. Um, at least um, there's no longer doubt. Jose Pesero will lead uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria to the forthcoming Africa Cup of Nations. Um, before now, you know, we were always debating, oh, who will it be? And then a lot of names popped up. Salisu Yusuf, Finidi George, Austin Igravon, who is the football director of the NFF. And a lot of us raised our fears, saying that um, this would um, disrupt um, the little continuity we've seen in recent times. And then having Jose Pesero lead the Super Eagles to the Africa Cup of Nations and then also giving him that um, get to the semifinals at least. I feel that this should put him on his toes. And mm. this new contract... Aside from it being that he had to, you know, um, reduce his pay, he got a pay cut. I, I, I learned he will not be getting $70,000 per month like he did before. It will now be, say, around 50000 We also hear that this contract renewal means he will be domiciled in Nigeria, mm. unlike the journeyman contract he got the last time. So staying back in Nigeria could also mean that he would take charge of our home base eagles okay and if that happen mm. then it will be a better six nine months ahead of us than what we have had before now under jose pesero okay like you earlier said the new ag arrangement also places him in command of uh, the super eagles b and the home base athletes yeah. they have to play twice yearly for the african nations championship the chan i was a bit weighing this option here and i'm feeling are the Nigerian football administrators considering a born out, the pressure? Do they even envisage a good result for less pay, cutting it from 70,000 US dollars to 50,000? Don't you think it's just um, too much for less pay? I don't think it's too much for less pay because even before now, we asked questions. Same way when they brought in Janet Rowe, we asked questions. What's his pedigree? What's his antecedent? Where is he coming from? And also Jose Pesero, I think the only name that caught Nigerians when you talk about Jose Pesero was Jose Mourinho that was tied to it, yes. that he gave the recommendation. Yeah. None of us really knew Jose Pesero. And then you look at his track record. The, 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 the last country he, he tinkered, what really did he do? Nigeria is one of the best football playing side in the world, not even to talk about Africa, because we love football a lot. We should be looking at coaches, managers that will take our football to the next level, not unknown names. Look at where Senegal is. Look at where Morocco is. And then you know that we are way, way, way behind you know, our other competitors in Africa. So I feel that them telling him to stay back in Nigeria and then also handle the home base, home base if it gives him more responsibility. It's not a case of him just coming to venues to jot down names that we will not see when he releases his list. This list of 23 men that will play against uh, uh, Sao Tome and Principe, how many um, home base goals do we have? Just one. And that's the goalkeeper from Hingimba. So it, it goes to show you that he's not really in tune with what's happening back home. So let him stay back in Nigeria. Let him help the league also grow. And then let him pick players and then tinker these boys to go take on teams in Africa. This is just this is a good way you know, to renew his contract. And it shouldn't just look like the contract we gave to Randy Wardrum where he, he saw us as a, a side gig and not really, you know, having himself enmeshed in the, the, the job. Okay, um, I'm sure this is a plus one for the Nigerian Football Federation after the complaints about them being a no short change without having enough money to pay um, yeah. their, uh, you know, employees. But let's look at the list. 
that um, Jose Pusieru unveiled yesterday for the last game in the AFCON qualifiers. We saw a bit of um, a, a change and new invites with a very obvious omission there. But it's of great one to say it was very obvious to see that with an average of um, 0.7 goals for every 90 minutes on the pitch, Gibbs Oban has been given that nod for the Super Eagles um, squad. Also, we had a 40% impact on goals, amounting to five goals, 50% on assists. Victor Boniface also is a name that is um, <coughs> a very obvious in that list. What are your thoughts, Kinsley, on the English, um, the Super Eagles' new invites, um, seeing that we will not have Ahmed Musa this time in the list? Hmm. I'm very excited. I'm very excited, you know, with the trio. Let's look at um, the guys that um, they will get to replace. Maybe say Ahmed Musa, Tere Mofi, and then uh, maybe we should see that Sadiq Kumar or maybe uh, um, Epolo Noachu. Having Gift Urban, having Victor Boniface, and then Jordan Torunariga. Remember on that Genetro, Genetro was chasing you know, the, the, this player who from a very young age, he was saddled with the responsibility of leading the youth team in Germany. So having these players, Victor Boniface, Shabi Alonso, his new manager at Bayer Leverkusen, has said that he's a beast. Explosiveness. I, I think um, after the likes, um, the, the days of the Tijani Babangidas and Ahmed Musa's younger um, you know, time, we've not really had this kind of uh, a pace that Kiftoban is going to bring into the national team. My only worry will be on Jose Pesero's tactical prowess. Will he be able to blend these players to give us what we want? I love what he did in the first leg against Saltome and Principe, where we scored 10. 10. I would like to see him replicate that. Yes, let's have Osime, let's have Victor Boniface, let's have, you know, the Gift of Bans and Co. Maybe he shouldn't have invited the Kileti Yen at all and the Wilfred NDDs who should try to, you know, rejig re re their career at Leicester City in the championship. Maybe we should have invited some more players who will be hungry. But attack-wise, we can scare any defence in world football. And then defensively also, having Calvin Bassi, Jordan, Shemi Ajayi, all these guys, the manager needs to look for a fantastic formation. A formation that would enhance these players giving their optimal best when they play for the national team. It shouldn't be a case of when we see these players play in their club sites. For instance, Taiwa Woniyi has been bowling defense in the EPL. He comes back to play for the national team, and you can't find him on the field of play. So this is something about Jose Pesero's tactical progress. So I want him to do more. If he can harness all of their qualities and talents, I think we should watch out for the Super Eagles of Nigeria in the next half -con. Okay, well, your stadium will be hosting, of course, um, Nigeria, Saltome Principe in that encounter. Nigeria City has 12 points, so we cannot wait to see if they will finish that group on high. All right, um, let's go straight to the English Premier League. I saw exciting games wow. in the English Premier League, <laughs> of course, for Sunday. Liverpool, they lived up to their best at Anfield. They go three, three, great one. Clean shit for Alice, Alison Becker there. But... There is one team that I would always bring to the fore and always, you know, tout. I'll always pinch them behind. We are back to that old Manchester United again, Kinsley. I think Marcus Rashford cost United this um, their match in the, against Arsenal. He was a bit wasteful, of course, to play. Two vital situations we saw there, and Marcus Rashford could not just convert that um, chances. Then we have the situation of um, Jadon Sancho, his omission in the squad. The back and forth between well, Eric Ten Hag and Sancho makes me wonder it, if Ten Hag, Kinsley, can send a club legend to Saudi Arabia. Who is Sancho again, Kinsley? Hmm. Honestly, who is Sancho? I, 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 I'm not surprised to see what's happening in Manchester United. I feel that um, the owners of um, the club have given uh, the manager the right to go ahead and then ask players who are not doing too well. So if... Eric Ten Hag would ask Cristiano Ronaldo from his team, who then is Jordan Sancho. But coming back to the game against Arsenal yesterday, I, mean, I don't think Jordan Sancho, um, Marcus Rashford was the reason why Manchester United lost. I just okay. feel that um, based on 
balance of play, how both teams have come into the new season, how both how their top players have settled in. I think Arsenal uh, um, are the better side currently as we speak. If there's any team in England that can stop Manchester City from winning the league back to back to back to back, it will be Arsenal and not Manchester United. You look at even the Manchester United side that played against Arsenal. Would you believe, would you have believed it that Man United will finish with a centre-back pairing of Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans had left Man United seven and a half years ago. He came back to finish that game against Arsenal. If you say um, Marcus Rashford was wasteful, how mm. about Kai Havertz? Mm. How about Bukayo Saka? Who couldn't put the ball? Eric Ten Hag had given an excuse for <laughs> Kai Havertz, saying he's um, yet to settle. Tweet one for me it was just a sherry there on top of the cake. So Arsenal all the way, but I'm not in support. We're talking about teams that have settled. Okay. Teams that yeah, for Liverpool, that defensive midfield position will still worry them. Anytime they play against a team that can really come at them with waves and waves and waves of attack. They will crumble. McAllister, Dominic Soboslai, and mm. maybe Jones or Endo cannot give you what Henderson, Fabinho used to give Liverpool way back and then sit in front of that back four and make sure that nothing passes through them. That's what Rodri gives you at Man City. That's what makes Man City what they are. That's what Declan Rice, Thomas Party, even Jorginho would give you at Arsenal. That's what Casemiro and then Amrabat, that man United just but would give you, you know, in this top side. I don't think yes, Lee, I'm scared. I'm yet. scared about Amrabat, though. Very scared about Amrabat with a, a squad that has got Casemiro. Yes, Amrabat will come in when Ten Hag needs to play the big games away from home, where you need maybe a double pivot, you need yeah. two players to sit in the front of the defense. middle. Mm -hmm. So you will pair Amrabat with Casemiro. But I don't think Amrabat, you know, will just get into United and then be a starter. I think if there's anyone that will have to start in United, his name is Rasmus Hoyland. You saw him come on against Arsenal. He, he bullied the defence, you know, when he had the opportunity. But then he needs to really, really, you know, sync with Rashford and Anthony and then Bruno Fernandes. And then you will get the best of um, this particular player. I just feel that, uh, you know, the EPL, they've been able to serve us exciting football games in all match day match day one match day two match day three and then match day four that just ended before the international break arsenal against manchester united for me arsenal fans should be worried that whatsoever it is that michael ateta is doing with the kai Havertz experiment is not working arsenal would have dropped two points yesterday if not for the quality of players that they brought in from the bench. If it were to be about Mikel Ateta's tactical prowess and his approach to that game, I think they would have not gotten all three points. So bringing in Fabio Vieira, Jorginho, and most importantly, Gabriel Jesus tilted the game, switched the game back to advantage Arsenal. Remember that Ganacho almost gave Man United yes. all three points. Yeah. If that goal has stood, mm -hmm. then Man United would have defended with their lives and it would have been Man U winning two goals to one away at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. But when Ateta brought on board all of these players that I mentioned, you could see that the game had to switch to advantage Arsenal. So Ateta did so well last season, tactically. This season, I don't know what it's all about. I don't know what the experiment with Kai Havertz is. How do you play party at right back? How do you try to, you know, fix what is not broken? Revert to your former, you know, formation, 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, as they call it, and just replace Declan Rice with Granny Chaka and let the team play this Kai Havert experiment. Allow Kai Havert to sit on the bench and then learn the rules like other players do. Pep Guardiola did it with Jack Grealish. See what Jack Grealish is doing right now at Manchester City. And we've seen, you know, managers do this for top side, top stars okay. that he brought on board. Okay. So Pep Guardiola, Mikel Ateta, you don't have to disrupt your team. Don't okay. disrupt the flow. I'm very because sure that if you if I've got the chance to speak to him directly, I would say Kingsley Ackman says, do not um, disrupt the flow, Mikel Ateta. Yeah, um, time not our friend right now. Kingsley, we have to go. I wish we could continue the conversation, you know. Thank you so much for joining us on In The Game. I'm hoping that these teams will take from where you have just spoken right now on the show. Have a lovely day. Yeah, thank you very much, Renia, for having me. Have a pleasant week ahead. You too.